this point, the sun will evolve quickly. Now let's look at the future events according to these models. When a sun-like star reaches an age of about 10.9 billion years, and for the sun, that'll be about six and a third billion years from today, the star's core will have run out of hydrogen. Then, most of the core's volume will have been replaced by an inert helium ash. As a result of the massive weight bearing down on it, this inert helium core will contract and heat up. Even still, it does not ignite helium fusion. To keep the star from collapsing then, the hydrogen burning moves out into a shell around the core. This shell burning has observable results. At the surface of the star, the temperature will drop to about 5,500 Kelvin, and the size will grow to about 1.6 times the radius of the sun, and the luminosity will increase to about two and a quarter times the luminosity of the sun. These three parameters are interrelated via the Stefan Boltzmann law applied to stars. Physically, its luminosity and radius grow because the fusion source is now closer to the surface. The luminosity increase means that there's greater energy production happening in the core due to these extreme internal changes. As we now follow the track of the sun into the future, we will see how its appearance will change. The time steps will not be the same between each location on the track as we go forward. It'll just be the path it takes. This path denotes all the observable changes that will happen due to the events and changes happening in the core. Every star will make such changes, and we'll see in future lectures how different stars make different tracks. In our current example, in six and a third billion years, the sun will leave the main sequence, becoming a subgiant star. So what is this shell burning, and why does it increase the luminosity? All right, so as the sun runs out of hydrogen, there is less fuel in the volume of the star's core where fusion can occur. Also, the volume of fusion-capable core that's not occupied by inert helium is getting smaller. It's this combination that demands that the average kinetic energy of a given hydrogen nucleus, whether it's a proton or deuterium, or even a light helium nucleus, all must be higher. This is because the same top pressure Due to all the same overlying material, the components of the proton-proton chain must move faster and faster just to find other components in order to complete the fusion process. Well, it's not like the nuclei are seeking each other at some speed dating session for lonely singles. There's no intent to them. It's just that in order to maintain hydrostatic and thermal equilibrium in the star, the components of fusion don't encounter each other often enough unless they're going faster. So we can equate the average kinetic energy, one half mv squared, resulting from the faster speeds of the nuclei to the average thermal kinetic energy, three halves kBT. We see that the temperature must increase. With an increased temperature comes an overall increase in energy output by the Stefan Boltzmann law for a black body. Since this will necessarily heat the gas above the hydrogen burning shell, it will expand, lifting some pressure off the core. The star's radius will grow until the pressure decreases enough to balance the energy output of the core, but a larger star with a higher luminosity all means that the star is getting brighter. The reaction of a star to running out of fuel is therefore to burn brighter and hotter. Now, while the core temperature is increasing, the surface temperature decreases because the star is getting physically larger, better allowing heat to escape. On the HR diagram, it moves up more luminous, and to the right, cooler. All the while this is happening, the central core is becoming quite important to the star. The innermost 3% of the star's mass fraction must be all at the same temperature. This isothermal core supports all the weight above it. To do so, the density must greatly increase down to the very center. As the hydrogen burning shell dumps more ash on top of it from above, the mass fraction of the isothermal innermost inert core grows relative to the entire star. The innermost 3% total core depletion of hydrogen with shell burning around it will be the state of the sun when it's 9.8 billion years old. The weight of all the star will keep pushing down on this isothermal pure helium core for another 1.5 billion years. For these next 1.5 billion years, the Sun is now what's called a subgiant star. It expands radially in size, keeping a near constant luminosity of about 2.2 solar luminosities and inches towards the base of the red giant branch. To do so, it swells in size from 1.6 to 2.25 solar radii, which cools the surface layers from 5,500 Kelvin 
down to 4,900 gallon. This huge growth of the outer layers means that it's not held on as hard by gravity. Therefore, this lateral move across the HR diagram is accompanied by the start of a slow mass loss in the form of a stellar wind. As time progresses and the star increases in size, this wind will pick up steadily. This marks its approach to the base of the red giant branch. It's interesting that the luminosity stays the same given what I just described, but here the mass loss is now a balancing factor. Since the luminosity is not changing, then conditions in the core must be changing in some new way. More helium ash is building up in the isothermal core, but the core is now strongly compressing, and this compression is still mostly according to the ideal gas law, but that will change soon. Importantly, it is this foundation at the core that supports the entire star by increasing the pressure down to the very center, without producing any new energy. The volume where the conditions are ripe for hydrogen fusion above the core remain roughly the same. As more nucleons fall into the region from above, the core contracts below as the newly created helium falls. The larger radius arises because the mass loss takes away the inward pressure due to gravity. The stellar wind mass loss is driven by that huge heat output that is coming from this ever-increasing temperature of this shallow fusion layer. Looking again at our equation, a larger radius but with the same luminosity means lower surface temperatures. The end of the road for this arrangement happens when the isothermal core reaches 8% of the mass of the entire Sun. That's where our limit of the additional 1.5 billion years comes from. Now the Sun is 11.4 billion years old and the core can no longer support the weight above it. It now collapses on the Kelvin-Helmholtz timescale. At this point, there is no nuclear fuel, so the only way to provide heat is to collapse and convert that energy into heat then light. The total gravitational energy of the Sun's inert core divided by the luminosity needed to add to the shell burning to keep the Sun from runaway freefall gives us a time. This time is how long the Sun will be able to support itself in this way, which is only about 900 million years. This collapse of the core marks the very beginning of the subgiant phase of the Sun's life. This subgiant phase obviously must end. This constant luminosity, increasing radius, decreasing temperature phase ends about 250 million years later. And it does so when it starts to become a red giant. While the core collapses and compresses the outer layer, the greatly expanded outer envelope decreases in temperature. This allows the increasing creation of what we call the hydrogen minus ion in the envelope, or an H minus ion. This ion is basically a hydrogen atom with a loosely attached second electron. This wacky sounding ion radically increases the opacity inside the star. And this increase in opacity creates a very deep convection zone inside the star that goes from the surface photosphere all the way down to where the sun or any star of its mass has created a lot of fusion products from the CNO cycle. This convection is so efficient at transferring energy throughout the star that the outer envelope increases in size even more. Deep in the core, the helium core is still collapsing, getting denser, and releasing its gravitational potential energy as heat and light in a desperate attempt to keep the star from collapsing. And as it does so, it's starting to use a new trick, though, electron degeneracy. 